Okay, so for number seven, we want to find the intervals on which the function is increasing or decreasing. And so when I'm doing this, I kind of just go from left to right and think to myself, when does it switch from increasing to decreasing? And so we're moving this way, right? And it looks like we're increasing all the way up until negative three right here. And then we're decreasing. And then once we hit this negative one spot, then we start increasing again, right? And just a good way to remember how to do that is just um, if from left to right, if it's going, if it, the number is going up, then we're increasing, right? So we're increasing all the way from negative infinity um, to negative three, and also from negative one to infinity. Okay, and then we're decreasing in that room that's between that's from negative three to negative one. Okay, next we uh, for number eight we are trying to find which interval is the average rate of change the smallest and why. So um, this is a exponential decay function. And um, something to know with, about this function is the rate of change is actually going down as we move to the right. So um, for example, if we look at this like negative two spot and the negative one spot, the change is pretty large. But then whenever we go from like this one to two, the change is much smaller, right? So because I know that the rate of change is decreasing as we move to the right, then the the interval with the rate with the smallest rate of change is just gonna, is just gonna be the farthest right interval, which will be from one to two. Okay, so for number nine, we have um, the temperature at which water boils depends on the altitude above sea level, as shown in the table. Um, and so the first question is, is the data in the table linear? And how do we know that? So for this, all I would really do is just calculate the slope for like two of the, uh, between two points, and then do it again between two other points, and then see if it's the same. Because if the slope's the same, then we know it's linear. So for the first one, I'm gonna do 208 minus 210 over 2.2 minus 1.1. Uh, that's, uh, that's gonna get me a um, negative two over um, 1.1, right? And then we'll do it again between two other points, right? So I'll try 206 uh, minus 208 over 3.3 .3 minus 2.2, .2, and that'll also get us negative two over 1.1, right? So we do know that it is linear, so yes, because we know that the slope is the same between these two points as it is between these two points, so we got a straight line. So now it wants a formula to express the temperature um, as an as um, or express the temperature t as a function of the altitude, right? So now that we have the slope, which we know is negative two over one point one, um, the um, standard form for a formula, if it's we know it's linear, it can be y equals m x plus b, right? We know the m already, right? Now, uh, for this, we want to try to make sure we know which one is x and which one is y, right? And so it's uh, we want to find a formula to express the temperature t as a function of a, right? And so it's going to be t equals m a plus b, okay? Again, we know that m is negative 2 over 1.1. So we need to figure out what that b is going to be, right? So we know t equals negative 2 over 1.1a plus b, right? So to find that b, um, not too hard. Basically, you just pick any of the four points that we have, plug in your t and your a, and then you can find what b works for you, OK? So I'm going to plug in 1.1 uh, and 210, right? So we know that we will get 210 if we have a negative 2 over 1.1 times 1.1 plus b, right? The 1.1 is canceled. We have negative 2. We add it over. And so our b is going to be 2, 12. So our final answer for part b is going to get us uh, t equals negative 2 over 1.1a uh, plus 2, 12. Okay, so that's gonna be B. Uh, for C, it wants us to, uh, we wanna give the slope of the function and explain its meaning in practical terms, right? Uh, we already know the slope, that's this part right here, right? So for C, we already know it's uh, negative two over 1.1 1 
Uh, it does want us to round, so we can go ahead and, and type that into a calculator, which is the same thing as negative 1.1818, okay? And then explaining its meaning in practical terms. Uh, the best way to do this in my uh, in my mind is always to think about the units that you're using, right? So in our case, the negative 2 is measured in altitude, and the um, the 1.1, or sorry, the negative 2 is measured in temperature, and the 1.1 is measured in your altitude, which is in feet, right? So if it has, um, if you have temperature on top over feet, right, then that's going to be uh, degrees per feet, right? So it's the number of degrees you uh, increase or decrease every foot that you go up in altitude, right? So, yeah, so the number of degrees you need to boil water every increase in foot in altitude. Okay, so for part D, we want to take our formula and put it to use because it wants, we, want, we, we want to know at what temperature does water boil in still water, which has an altitude of about 900 feet. So what we can do is take our formula and plug in an altitude of 900 feet. Um, so we're going to have T equals um, negative 2 over 1.1. And then we're going to plug in our altitude. Remember, altitude altitude is in thousands of feet. So we'll do 0 0.9 thousand, right, plus uh, 212, okay? So what we get is, what we get is a T of um, 210.363 degrees, okay? So that's going to be D. Okay, so for number 10, we have a plumber and they charge according to a formula where C of T is, is the charge in dollars after T working hours. We want to know what the vertical intercept is and the slope and explain their meanings, right? And so if we think about the standard form of a linear function, right, we get Y equals MX plus a B, right? In our case, our X is a T, not an, uh, not an X. So let's put a T there. And I know that the thing next to the T is always my slope. And the, th and the thing that's not next to the T, so the, the plus part, is always my y-intercept, right? Okay, so in this one, we have C of T equals uh, 150 plus 90T, right? So in our case, our slope is 90, okay? What is that, what, what is that um, in practical terms, right? Well, so it's the plumber that's charging according to a temp, I, um, as how much time he works in hours, right? And so if I'm going to take the number of hours I work and multiply it by this 90, right? That's and, and that will give me the dollars that the hours cost, right? What it will be is dollars per hour, right? So it's the number of dollars that they charge per hour of work, right? So the other thing we have there is that 150, right? So our y-intercept or our vertical intercept is that 150, right? So y intercept is it gonna, gonna be that 150. What is that in practical terms? Well, even if I have zero hours worked, it'll still charge me $150, right? So what that is, it's it's like a it's a base um, charge before I start working, right? So I, I however you want to describe that, it's like it's just a base charge. Or a fixed fee, I guess you could say. Okay, so for number 11, we need to find the equation of the line that passes through um, our curve here. So we have the equation for the curve, and they tell us that it crosses at negative 2 and, or sorry, at positive 2 and 4, right? So the first thing I'm going to do, just right off the bat, is plug in 2 and 4 and get those points. Right, so if I plug in 2, uh, 2 minus 2 squared is 0. Um, and so this will be 1, right? So our first point is 2 comma 1, right? Uh, our other point will be 2, or sorry, 4 minus 2 is 2 squared uh, will get us 4 uh, times negative 1 half will be negative 2 plus 1, um, so negative 1, so we'll have 4 comma negative 1, right? So those are our two points. And now we just have to find an equation um, for this line with these two points, right? And that's not super hard. We can do um, our uh, slope formula to get our slope, right? So negative 1 minus 1 over... 4 minus 2, that'll get us uh, a negative 2 over 2 slope, so a negative 1 slope. Our slope is negative 1. And then um, 
we know y equals mx plus b, right? Our slope is negative 1. We know uh, several x's and y's. So I can plug in, for example, let's plug in a y of 1, uh, our slope of negative 1, and then we know our x is 2. And we can solve now for our b, right? So we'll have a negative 2. Uh, add that over, we'll have a b of 3, okay? So our final answer for this will be y equals uh, negative x plus uh, 3. Okay. Number 12, we want to find an equation of a line that passes through the point negative 7, 1 and is perpendicular to the line um, uh, that has the equation negative 2y minus 5x equals 6. Okay. So for this one, it's kind of similar to the last one, only instead of giving two points, they give us one point and then they give us another line that's perpendicular to it. The reason that the line is perpendicular to it is helpful because we can use that to find our slope, right? If we have the slope of a line that's perpendicular, we just have to do the opposite inverse to, uh, to get our slope, right? So first let's find the slope of this line. I'm gonna solve for y really fast. And what I'll get is negative two y equals five x plus six, and I'll divide by negative two. So we'll have a y equals five over negative two x uh, minus three, okay? So the only part that really matters is, is the five, uh, this five over negative two part, because um, we want to know what the slope of our line is if this line is perpendicular, right? So we will do the opposite in, or the yeah the opposite inverse, and what we'll get for that is our slope is going to be two over five, right? So switch the signs and flip the flip the uh, fraction over, and that'll get us our slope, right? So we know we know our slope now, and we have a point, right? So I can use y equals mx plus b to um, find our equation. Okay, so we have y equals 2 over 5 x plus b, right? We have a y and an x, right? So 1 is equal to 2 over 5 negative 7 plus b, right? We can solve for our b now. Uh, when you work that out, you'll get a b of 19 over 5. And so our final answer is going to be y equals 2 over 5 x plus 19 over 5. Okay? For number 13, uh, we have a salesman. The profit when 10 vacuum cleaners are sold is 462, and the profit when 25 vacuums are sold is 4, uh, 1422. Assume this is a linear relationship. What is the average rate of change in the profit for each vacuum sold? Right? So this is just a really complicated way of saying what's our slope for this line, right? We're given basically two points, right? We're given... We know when we, when we sell 10 vacuum cleaners, right, so an X of 10, right, we make $462, right? Whenever we sell a 25, we make $14, $22, right? So think of this as just two points on this line, right, where the number of vacuum cleaners sold is your X and the amount of money made is your Y, right? So knowing that, we can now find our average rate of change just by doing the slope formula, right? So 1422 minus 462 over 25 minus 10 and that'll get us a slope of uh, that'll be 64 right and so think about the units here uh, the, the top number is dollars right and the bottom number is your vacuums right so 64 is our answer right and it'll be dollars per vacuum right so we're paying 64 dollars per vacuum at this point right and now we want to write a linear function for the profit p as a function of the number of vacuums sold right so we just found our slope, we can take that and just work it out to find our B, right? So we have P equals 64 and then uh, times N plus a B, and we can just work out that B, right? I'll use this first point, the 10 and 462. So we have 462 is equal to 64 times 10 plus B. We'll get a B of negative 168 or negative 178, sorry. And so that our final equation will be uh, 64 in minus 178. Uh, that's for part B. Okay, next, uh, we have number 14. We want to find each of the following uh, f for the function shown below. Okay, so 
the uh, part a is just we want f of negative three that's pretty easy we just have to find where um uh what the what the y value is whenever x is negative three so one two three and that should get us a value of uh, positive five uh, for f of 4, uh, same thing, go to an x value of 4. Our y is looking like it's going to be negative 6. Okay, we want to know for what value of x is f of x 2, right? So this is the opposite. Instead of giving us an x, they're basically giving us a y, right? So our y is 2, right? And we actually have two values, right, of x that get us a... Um, make this true, right? So we know that this is true at x equals 1, but also negative 2 as well, right? So now we look at the other one. We have for what value of x is f of x, uh, where f of x is less than 2, right? So not only are we looking at those two points, but we're looking at everything below them too. So as long as it's below this line, it's, it's true, right? So it looks like it's going to be from this negative 2 point, and all of the rest of these as well, right? So I'll just say from negative 2 all the way um, to uh, 4. Uh, x values in that entire range will make that true. And so now we want to know the domain and the range of the function, right? Domain is just all x values that exist, right? So um, our lowest x value that is allowed um, is negative 5, right? But negative 5 is not included. Keep in mind that there's a circle there, right? So it'll be negative 5 uh, with an open open parentheses all the way up to um, positive 4 is our highest, right? And that, that it does include positive 4, so we can do a square bracket there. For range, we would just want to look at everywhere uh, all the y values that are allowed, right? So our lowest is going to be negative 6. It does include negative 6. Right, and our highest will be positive five, and we do include that as well because that is not a dot or not a circle; it's fully filled in. Okay, so that's our domain and range. For number fifteen, we have f of x is negative three minus x squared. We want to find the following and simplify completely. Okay, so for this first one, the first thing I always do is find f of x plus h before I plug it in. So f of uh, sorry, a plus h. So f of a plus h is just where you take a plus h and, and replace it everywhere there's x, right? So we'll have 3 minus uh, a plus h squared, right? We know f of a is just everywhere there's an x, you replace it with an a. So 3 minus a squared, right? And we're divided by h. So I can go ahead and plug that in, right? We're going to have negative, uh, sorry, well, 3 minus a plus h squared minus 3 plus a squared, okay? And that's all going to be divided by h. All right. Um, so we are told to fully simplify. So I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do whenever I simplify this is going to distribute that a plus h squared, right? So I'll have 3, um, three minus, and then it'll be a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 3 plus a squared all over h. Okay, remember this negative is distributed, so it'll be negative here and a negative here. Don't forget that. And now we can go ahead and start canceling because this a, uh, this a squared is negative, we'll cancel with that one. This 3 will cancel with that one. And all we're left with is a negative 2ah minus h squared over h. And whenever we cancel that h, what we'll be left with as our final answer is 2a minus h.